Today we're gonna to do a little exercise where we look at a math contest and we pick a problem from the beginning and a problem near the end and, well, solve both of them just to give an idea for the range of difficulty in problems on math contest exams. Keeping in mind that generally the problems are written in a way that they go from easiest to hardest. And so here we're looking at two problems from a Bangladesh 2001 math Olympiad. Let's look at this first one. So let's let a of n be the remainder when dividing n by 11. And then we'll set t of n equal to the sum a1 plus a2 all the way up to a of n. And our goal is to find a evaluated at t evaluated at 2021. Now this solution is going to go pretty quick. So let's note the following, and that is that A evaluated at N is simply congruent to N modulo 11. So of course, if we're talking about dividing by a number and keeping the remainder, that's equivalent to reducing mod, well, 11 in this case. And now we're essentially ready to finish it off. So let's look at A of T of 2021. So that's gonna be congruent to T of 2021 mod 11. But now that's gonna be congruent to A of one plus added up to A of 2021 mod 11. Just keeping in mind how our function T is defined. But then by the fact that addition is well-defined mod 11 or mod n really, we can just replace this with one plus two all the way up to 2021 mod 11. And now we can use a standard form for a triangular number. In other words, this sum from one to 2021, which is the 2021st triangular number. And that's gonna be equal to 2021 times 2022 over two, but this is all occurring mod 11. Now we'll take that 2022 and divide it by two, so that gives us 2021 times 2022 divided by two, in other words, 1011 modulo 11. And now we reduce each of these numbers mod 11, but there's this nice trick that says that the remainder when you divide by 11 is simply the alternating sum of the digits starting at the right. So this is a standard divisibility trick. So that means starting at the right, this is going to be one minus two plus zero minus two mod 11. And this one right here is gonna be one minus one plus zero minus one modulo 11. But of course, we can do those arithmetic problems. That's simply minus three times minus one mod 11. In other words, this whole thing is three mod 11. But since our question is to find the remainder after dividing by 11, this is equivalent to reducing this whole thing mod 11. And we've done it, so the answer is three. Okay, now let's move on to this second harder problem. Okay, so for our second problem, we need something called an adjective function, and that's just defined for this problem. So that's gonna be a function from z to z, satisfying this weird inequality that g of m plus g of n is bigger than the maximum of m squared and n squared. Then we'll let f be an adjective function that minimizes this object right here, f of one plus f of two plus f of three, all the way up to f of 30. And then our goal is to find the smallest possible value of f of 25. So in other words, we work over all functions that minimize this expression. And over all functions that minimize this expression, we find the one with the smallest value at 25. So I think this function is, or, or this problem is pretty crazy looking. I think much harder than this first one, but that makes sense. I think this is the next to last problem on the exam. All right, so how are we gonna get started? So I think maybe we should build an inequality for this expression f1 up to f30, and then find a function that achieves the smallest value of that inequality. That's how we can minimize this. Okay, so here's how we'll do it. So let's take a sequence a n where n goes from 1 to 15 
so that the set A1 up to A15 is simply the set 16 up to 30. So in other words, we're gonna take all of the numbers from 16 to 30 and we're gonna shuffle them around into any order we want. And then whatever order we end up with, we'll call the first one A1, the second one A2, and so on and so forth. And since we're doing this arbitrarily, that means that this kind of calculation we do will actually work for any shuffling of our numbers from 16 to 30. Now I'd like to make the following observation, and that is if I take f of one plus f of two plus all the way up f of 29 plus f of 30, that's gonna be equivalent to f of one plus f of a one, and then plus f of two plus f of a two, all the way up to f of 15, plus f of a 15. And that's because, well, I've got the numbers one to 15 in there, and then the numbers a one to a 15 are simply the numbers 16 to 30. But now by our inequality, we know that each of these is bigger than the maximum of, in this case, one and a one. And then this one right here is gonna be larger than the maximum of, 2 and a2, all the way up to this one right here, which is larger than the maximum of 15 and a15. But check it out. The numbers a1 to a15 are all between 16 and 30, which means those are the largest of these entries. a1 is bigger than 1, a2 is bigger than 2, and so on and so forth. So that makes this whole thing bigger than, let's see, a1 squared plus a2 squared plus all the way up to a15 squared. But then observe that if it's strictly bigger than, in this case, the maximum of these, I guess I missed a squared here, so let's get these squares on here, then that means it's bigger than or equal to this maximum plus one. That's because we're working over the integers here, so everything is discrete. Which means I can bring those plus ones down, and we have this whole thing is bigger than or equal to this sum plus the number 15, because I've got 15 ones. But now the set a1 to a15 is simply the set from 16 to 30, so this is equal to 16 squared plus 17 squared all the way up to 30 squared plus 15. Okay, so now bringing this down, let's observe that we've just shown that f1 added up to f30 is bigger than or equal to 16 squared added up to 30 squared plus 15. Now, what we wanna do is, well, a couple of things. Let's start by supposing we've got a function that achieves this minimum value, and then find the minimum value of f of 25, assuming that our function satisfies this. And that may seem like we're done, but we're not in fact done yet, because we haven't shown that there actually exists a function that satisfies this minimum value. We've just shown that if a function satisfies this minimum value, then we can go on. And so we'll finish everything off by constructing a function that satisfies this minimum value. Okay, so let's get to it. Thanks for sticking around this long into the video. If you're enjoying the video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, consider subscribing. It really helps out. Okay, so, so far we've proven that this sum, f1 up to f30, has to be bigger than or equal to 16 squared plus 17 squared all the way up to 30 squared plus 15. And I think getting there isn't so hard, but getting the rest of this does get tricky, and so I'd like to point out that I'm loosely following the solution from an art of problem solving thread here. Okay. So now let's assume that we've got a function that doesn't just satisfy this inequality for which all adjective functions must, but it actually achieves this minimum value described by the inequality. So in other words, f1 plus f2 all the way up to f30 equals 16 squared plus 17 squared all the way up to 30 squared plus 15. But now let's observe that that pretty quickly implies the following two facts. And that is that for all m 
from the set one, two, up to 15. And then for all n from the set 16, 17, up to 30, we have f of m plus f of n has to be equal to n squared plus one. And well, I think that follows just by doing all the possible pairings of this sum right here. So you could pair f of one with f of 30, f of one with f of 16, or so on and so forth. And so this way we would achieve this sum right here. And also if we achieve this sum right here, we have to have this condition. And then, well, let's also observe that we have one more condition as well. And that is that f of one is the same thing as f of two, which is the same thing as all of these up to f of 15. So these things have to be the same. And that's because if they weren't the same and we did this sort of pairing with any of those two, then we would increase the value that this f of one to f of 30 would have to be. Okay, nice. Now I'd like to look at f of 16, f of 16 being the first value which is not equal to all of those. Okay, so let's note the following, and this is like a pretty straightforward calculation if you know to look for it. That is that f of 16 is the same thing as 1 half times f of 16 plus f of 16. I think that's pretty clear. But now let's observe that that is bigger than 1 half times 16 squared. Given that our inequality right here applied to 16, 16 just gives us 16 squared, the maximum of 16 squared and 16 squared, if you will. But let's observe that that equals 128. That's pretty easy to calculate. But putting this all together, that tells us that f of 16 is bigger than or equal to 129. Okay, nice. But now let's use that to get some sort of estimate for f of one, and then in turn, we'll use the estimate of f of one to find the minimum value of f of 25. So let's look at f of one plus f of 16. Now we know that this is equal to 16 squared plus one. And that's by this line right here. Well, 16 squared plus one is 257. But just for structure, I'll put 16 squared plus one here, 257. But now let's observe, that means that f of one is equal to 257 minus f of 16. But then putting this inequality f of 16 bigger than or equal to 129, that tells us that f of one is less than or equal to 257 minus 129. But 257 minus 129 is 128. So there we have it. Let's maybe keep this over here. We have f of one is less than or equal to 128. Okay, so let's put a box around that. We've got a minimum value, or I guess a maximum value of f of one. Okay, so now let's do the same kind of thing as this calculation with f of 25. So we've got f of one plus f of 25. On the one hand, that has to be equal to 25 squared plus one, which is 626 by this rule right here. But then on the other hand, that's gonna tell us that f of 25 is equal to 626 minus f of one. But then we know that f of one is less than or equal to 128. So we know that this is bigger than or equal to 626 minus 128, which if you do that calculation, you get 498. So, what is that? Well, let's box that maybe. We've got f of 25 is bigger than or equal to 498. So that gives us a minimum possible value of f of 25. And that's a minimum value for f of 25, considering that this f of one plus f of 30 achieved this minimum value here. Now we've just got to show that not only 
can we build a function that achieves this minimum value, but that it also achieves this minimum value down here of f of 25? So far, we've shown that any function that satisfies our conditions has these properties. So f of 1 added to f of 30 achieves this 16 squared plus all the way up to 30 squared plus 15. We know f of 25 is bigger than or equal to 498. And then f of 1 is the same as f of 2 all the way up to f of 15, which is less than or equal to 128. Okay, so now our goal is to find a function f satisfying this stuff. That's also an adjective function. And it achieves this f of 25 equals 498. Okay, so, well, let's just jump right into it. So here's how we're gonna do it. So it's gonna be a piecewise function. And let's observe that we'll set it equal to 128 as long as the input is between n, or sorry, is between one and 15. So recall that we needed all of these to be equal. They had to be less than or equal to 128. So we'll just set them equal to 128. And so you can check by what we had before that anything less than 128 will create a larger value for f of 25. And so any of these, so f of 1 going down pushes f of 25 up. And then, well, since f of 1 is equal to all those, that means we would want all of those to be as big as possible. That's 128. And then we also need to tell what's going on with n if it's between 16 and 30, and then outside of these two choices. Now perhaps it's easiest to look at what's happening outside of these two choices. And notice that almost anything would work. In fact, if we were just to have kind of like any function at all, the n squared function would work. Because notice that m squared plus n squared is bigger than the maximum of n squared and m squared. So that definitely works there. But that being said, since we've got this stuff in the past, we can't just have n squared. So what works here is taking n squared plus 128. That allows us to take numbers bigger than 31, if you will, and then numbers less than 15 and still satisfy this condition right here. Now the next thing is, what are we gonna put here? That's actually a pretty easy calculation, just given one of the formulas that we uh, derived before, which was this f of m plus f of n has to be equal to n squared plus one if m is between one and 15, and then n is between 16 and 30. So that tells us that, for instance, f of 1 plus f of n, as long as n is in this region, has to be equal to n squared plus 1. But then we know that f of 1 is 128. So solving for f of n here, we get n squared minus 127. And then, well, you can check that, yes, in fact, we do satisfy this equality right here. And it's actually pretty easy to check. If you add these 15 times, you get 15 times 128. And then this will give us 16 squared all the way up to 30 squared minus 15 times 127. But 15 times 128 minus 15 times 127 will give us plus 15. So that achieves this rule right here. Then you can also check that it achieves this f of 25 equal to 498 by construction. Then finally, it's also an adjective function. So that means it does everything we need it to to achieve this proven minimum value of f of 25. Meaning that, well, our final answer over here is finally 498. And that's a good place to stop.